Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In today's do-it-yourself video, we're going to be replacing the alternator in a common earlier BMW. Now we'll be performing this replacement on an E33 series, that's 84 through 91. This model will have a six cylinder in it. The procedures you see us use will be applicable to most of the early BMWs with the four cylinder and six cylinder two valve engines. This would include all the way from 2002, Bavaria, CS, up through the 3, 5, 6, and 7 series models, again, with the two valve six cylinder. Now the parts we're going to be using are quite simple. Obviously the alternator itself will be replacing belts if required, since we'll be taking them off. And oftentimes, because of the age of these cars, we may need a new adjuster bar with the teeth on it, and a new adjuster nut. And of course, we'll be following the Bentley repair manual for torque values and other assistance. Now, all of this is available in our online store at bavauto.com. Now let's get to the work and see how easy this is. Okay, now here we are at a mid 80s three series model. This is an E30 chassis. The alternator replacement in this vehicle will be very similar for all of the late 70s, 80s, and early 90s model BMWs with the two valve six cylinder engines and four cylinder engines. So you can use these procedures in a general way to replace the alternator on any of these three, five, six, and seven series models. Now let's get to it. And don't forget, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. To access the alternator, we first need to remove the air filter box and the mass airflow sensor. We'll loosen the mounts, disconnect the mass airflow sensor harness plug, and loosen the intake boot hose clamp. Loosen the nuts. Loosen the intake boot hose clamp. And remove the harness plug. We can now lift and remove the filter box and the mass airflow sensor as an assembly. Before working on the alternator, be sure to disconnect the battery negative cable from the battery negative terminal. Disconnect and remove the wiring connections at the rear of the alternator. Pull the boots back to access the connection nuts. Remove the positive output wire by removing the securing nut. This is typically 13 millimeters. Pull the wire's ring terminal from the mounting stud. Now remove the exciter wire by removing the nut. This is typically 8 millimeters. Pull the wire's ring terminal from the mounting stud. Set the wiring harness aside. We can now loosen the upper mount and adjuster in order to remove the drive belt. Loosen the adjuster securing nut. The toothed adjuster nut can now be turned in order to loosen the belt. Note the teeth on the adjuster bar and the corresponding teeth on the adjuster nut. Note how turning the adjuster nut moves the nut along the teeth on the adjuster bar. The nut can be turned using a 19 millimeter wrench. With the alternator adjusted fully in toward the engine, pull the belt off of either the alternator pulley or the water pump pulley. If the belt will not readily come off the pulleys, try removing the complete upper adjusting nut and through bolt, which may allow the alternator to move a bit closer to the engine. 
If the adjuster through bolt assembly was not removed while removing the belt, remove the adjuster bolt securing nut and remove the adjuster bolt and adjuster nut. Note how the adjuster nut mounts onto the adjuster through bolt. The alternator is now free to pivot on the lower mounting bolt. Note that your alternator may not move freely due to corrosion on the lower bolt and mount, or the bolt may be overly tight. Compare the new alternator to help determine the location of the lower mount and mount bolt. In most cases, the lower mount bolt will have a 13 millimeter head. Loosen the lower mount bolt. Remove the lower mount bolt. Pull the alternator out of the mounting bracket. Note the captive nut for the lower mount bolt. In many applications, the alternator pulley and cooling fan must be transferred to the new alternator. For this model, we'll use an Allen bit and a ratchet to secure the shaft and a combination wrench to loosen the nut. If the nut is very tight, a quick wrap on the wrench with a hammer should loosen the nut. Remove the nut and proceed to remove the washers, pulley parts, and fan. Lay the parts out in the order that they were removed. Note the warning not to run the new alternator with a discharged battery. Note the key in the shaft and the keyways in the fan and pulley parts. Install the fan and pulley parts exactly as they were on the old alternator. Use the new nut supplied with the new alternator. Remove the nuts from the positive and exciter terminals on the new alternator. Install the lower mount captive nut into the mount bracket assembly. Lower the alternator into place in the mounting bracket. Install the lower mount bolt through the lower mount bracket and the alternator. Tighten the lower mount bolt, but do not fully tighten it at this time. Install the drive belt onto the alternator, water pump, and crankshaft pulleys. Note that we do recommend that a new belt be installed when replacing the alternator. This vehicle already has a new belt installed, so we did not replace it. In order to install the upper adjuster bolt assembly, it may be necessary to loosen the inner adjuster arm securing nut, which will allow the arm to pivot. Install the upper adjuster bolt, toothed nut, and securing nut through the adjuster arm and the upper alternator mounting eye. Tighten the securing nut enough to assure that the toothed adjusting nut is engaged with the teeth on the adjuster arm. Turn the adjuster nut to tension the belt. Tighten the adjuster securing nut. Install the positive and the exciter wires to the alternator terminals. Now we just need to reinstall the filter box and the airflow meter assembly. 
And finally, reconnect the battery negative cable, and then this job is complete. Well, that's it. That job is complete, and that wasn't too bad. Remember that all of the parts that you've seen us use are available in our online store at bavauto.com, or you can call our advisors at 800-535-2002 for further assistance or to place your order. You can check out our blog site at blog.bavauto.com for further technical assistance as well on other BMW and Mini models. Now, if you've liked this video, please hit your like button, send us some comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. With that, we're all finished here, and we're going to go off and create another do-it-yourself video.